Hi guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. I'm going to show you in this video how to find the average rate of change. So here we see a graph that is an exponential function and we know that because of our curved line here and this is a growth exponential function because it's going upward and to find the average rate of change you're going to try to find in between two points on this line what the average rate of change or um, what the average slope is, is another way of, of looking at it. So this function um, of the graph is represented by this algebraically. So we have f of x equals 5 times 1.34 to the x power. So the formula that you want to use is f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. Well, you're probably asking yourself, what does a and b stand for? And it's very simple. a and b, just like in our alphabet, a is the first letter of our alphabet and A will actually be the first number that they give you in the problem. B is our second number or second letter in the alphabet and B is going to be the second value or the second number in the problem. So now how are we going to go about actually solving an average rate of change problem? And there's three really easy steps and as long as you remember these three easy steps you're golden. So the first one is you need to plug in the A or the first number into your function and solve. So you're going to take whatever number they give you, plug it into this function right here, and solve for the answer. And remember, order of operations, we have to do the exponent first. And then the second step is going to be, you guessed it, plugging in the b, which is your second number. And you're going to plug that into your function and solve. So plug it in right here and solve. Remember, order of operations. And then the third is to take all of that that you just figured out, and plug it into the formula. So what answer that you got for f of b, you plug in here. The answer that you got for f of a, you plug in here. And then the numbers they gave you in the problem, the second number goes here and the first number goes here. So let me show you what that looks like on the next page. All right, so I just pulled over the directions that we had, the step-by-step. -step. So these are the same thing that we just went over. But here is a problem that we're going to use. So we're going to round your answer to the nearest tenth. And a common mistake students make is actually rounding in the middle of the problem or in the beginning of the problem. You do not want to do that until the very end. So what we're going to do is break this up. So following step one, we have plug A into your function and solve. So we're going to plug A into our function. So here we go. Our function is 5 times 1.34 to the x power. So if we plug 5 in there, we're going to have 5 times 4.320400342, which is a long number. But again, like I said, do not round until the very end. If you round in the middle, you're actually going to change the value of your problem, and you're going to get the wrong answer. And then you multiply those two together, and you find out that f of a is this answer. You're going to do the same thing for the um, for the b or f of b which is 7 so you're going to plug it in to where the exponent is and you get 5 times 1.34 to the seventh power make sure you do the exponent first do not round so you get 5 times 7.75771085 then you get that as a total answer so let me get rid of these boxes here so we can see what we do next and the third step is actually plugging it into your formula and solving. This is probably the easiest part. I call it plug and chug. So we're just going to plug our answers into the, these spots and we're going to get going. So we have our formula f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we're going to plug our values that we already found into the formula. So you can see that these numbers match. We've got f of b which is this goes right here. f of a goes right here and the second number is 7 which is your b goes right here and your 5 is your second number. So this is the setup. If you just remember the second number is B, the first number is A, you're good to go. And then the last thing is just to actually compute. So when you subtract and then you get this answer and then when you divide by 2 you get this answer. Now another hard thing to remember is to actually finish the problem which is rounding. So we're going to be looking at these values right here. We have are 0.59 and I always remember if it's five or more add one more if it's four or less let it let it rest so we're gonna look at the neighbor of five because five is in the tenths place this nine is five or more so we're gonna raise it up five or more add one more so this nine is five or more so we're gonna add one more to that five making it a six and that is your answer 8.6 so the average rate of change between five and seven for this function is 8.6 good job